Hello Legume Crafters, I'm Topco Mage and this is another Mechanism version 8 Spotlight. I'm coming to you once again from my Mechanism test world and today we're going to be handling the Energized Induction Matrix, something that I did kind of gloss over in that first video and I thought it would be a good idea to come back and go into them in more depth. There are also a couple of UI things that I missed in these, in all the machines. And the first one was that the side config and the transport config have both been given their own sections and they've been improved a little bit. Transport config is pretty much as it always was, so not much new there. But the side config now comes with a couple of nice new options. The first is that you have now separate config for energy, as well as in some machines, fluids, and even gas. So that is new. Now, this, these are the fluid and gas are not widely distributed into the machines yet, mostly because they're waiting for the dynamic models to be finished before they move on to including those in more machines. But it is a nice step forward from the lack of config that they've historically had for those. The other thing that I missed was something really nice with the electrolytic separator. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody's seen this who's used the electrolytic separator. One side's filled up and the other side is empty and not doing anything. Now, we can now fix that problem. It's kind of counterintuitive and I'm not entirely sure it works right, but if you set it to dumping excess on the side that you need more of, in this case the empty side, what it will do is it will dump the excess hydrogen on the opposite side so that it can produce more oxygen. And it will do that again for brine or anything else, but I'm just, this is the standard case. Now, the reason I say that I don't think this is working quite right is that if you take that off, when the oxygen eventually fills up, it seems to dump excess on both sides, no matter how you've set the other side. So really, it makes more sense that dumping excess should be on the hydrogen side and not the oxygen side. So again, I'm going to bring that to Aiden Brady's attention and see if maybe this isn't working quite right. But what I really want to talk about today is the energized induction matrix. The energized induction matrix is a very in-game energy storage device, and you start making these with your induction casing, which is pretty much what you surround your core that contains the useful stuff with, and your induction port, which is where you put in and draw out energy. Now your induction casing is just four steel ingots around an energy tablet, and it produces four induction casings. Four induction casing around an elite control circuit gives you one, or sorry, two induction ports. From there, you need the guts of these things, which are cells and providers. Now, the bulk of it's going to be cells, and cells are where all your energy is stored. And, and this is one of the parts that I really did gloss over last time, is the fact that these storage cells start at 400 mega RF and go up from there. You got your advanced, which is at 3.2 giga RF, your Elite, which is at 25.6 Giga RF, and your Ultimate, which is 204.8 Giga RF. Now the basic, as mentioned in the last one, is just lithium in the corners, energy tablets at your compass directions around a basic energy cube. And then everything upwards from there is just the previous energy cell around the energy cube of the same level and energy tablets in the corners. So those are all pretty straightforward to build. Again, a lot of capacity there, especially as you start making bigger and bigger energized induction matrices. Now the providers tell you how much you can output from an energy provider. It starts with the basic, which is at 25.6 kilo RF. Then you get your advanced at 204.8 kilo RF, 1.63 mega RF at the elite level, and 13.1 mega RF at the ultimate level. And again, I have doing this all in RF because I'm just used to it. You can also do it in many of the other energy levels, so use what you're comfortable with. And these, as mentioned last time, are lithium dusts in the corners, compass direction of control circuits at the same level that you want to make surrounding an energy cube at the same level you want to make. So for advanced, it's advanced control circuits around an advanced energy cube. Now the absolute smallest you can make one of these energized induction matrices is 3x3x3, three by three by three, and that would surround one cell. Unfortunately, that doesn't really get you much. That does get you something that will store energy, but if we go over to this nice statistics button, you can see that output is zero. So the statistics is very nice little screen, and it's very 
comprehensive and very intuitive. Basically, you get your ener the maximum energy that you can hold over here and how much you're currently storing, as well as t your current output statistics, which is what's going out and what you can possibly output, the dimensions, and what's inside the matrix, which is very nice information. This is basically all you'll ever need to know about these, these matrices. So in order to get your f a fully functional matrix, the smallest size you're going to be able to do is 4 by 3 by 3. So 3 high, 3 wide, 4 long, or you could also do 4 tall, any, as long as you've got 3 by 3 by 4. And that gives you one induction cell and one induction provider. That gives you enough to store energy and to provide energy. So as you can see, I've got an energy feed here. And I've got energy coming out into this ultimate energy cube. And again, you can see your statistics is green. I've got output, which is pulsing in there. And I've got the energy coming in and pulsing out. So there you go. And again, I see the constituents of one cell and one provider. The other nice thing about these cubes is that they are fully modular in that you can mix all the various levels together and they will be just happily and fine working together. So if I box this guy up, see it forms into its multi-block structure just fine. And we will see energy coming in and energy flowing out. So very nice that you don't have to worry about matching everything together. And so if you ever want to upgrade just one thing inside your matrix, easiest buy. Just pull out the one you want and plop it back in with everything else. Now the other thing that's nice about these is if I open this guy up, there are two advanced induction cells in here. Actually, let me button that back up real quick. I wanted to show you guys that this one's completely full. So I've got 6.4 giga RF in this thing. Now if I open her back up and break one of these into my inventory, keeps the capacity that's in it. So the stored energy doesn't go away even if you pick one of them up. And if I turn around here and find this nice crafting station and plop this guy in here, the thing that you make keeps that energy too. So the energy is, f is fully transferable to the next level. Plop this guy back in here, forms up, you got your energy there, and it starts counting right back up again. That is very nice. It means that you don't even have to ever worry about losing your energy if you have to do an upgrade. The other nice thing about doing an upgrade, and I'll come here through here to see, is let's say you pull out the guts of a full induction cell and you upgrade everything, but now you don't have enough to fill the cell. That doesn't matter. You can just box it right up and it still works. So you can have blank cells in there. You can be completely empty aside from one cell and it would still work. Now, the one thing that won't work is if you put induction casing inside, it doesn't join into a valid structure. So it has to be either an induction cell, an induction provider, or just emptiness. Now, that emptiness can actually be taken to a crazy level, and it will still work. We come around to this guy here. Oh, you hear my lasers. And you'll see inside, I have just a free-floating ultimate induction cell. Well, if I just button this one up, it still forms into a viable EIM, and sure enough, it detects that there is a cell in there, and it's powering up. That is just cool, isn't it? So you could actually have a free-floating free floating innards of an induction matrix. Now, everybody's always been wondering, how big can you make one of these? Well, <laughs> I honestly don't know. Big. This one right here, if I button it up, boom. This one right here is 774 tera RF and has dimensions of 16 by 20 by 17. That's about when I gave up building this thing. I was like, that's got 3,780 cells in it and it still forms into a valid multi-block structure. Now the other thing that I was asked is how fast can these things import energy? It's essentially infinite. Oh, we need a creative here. It's essentially infinite, but not quite. So if we put this creative energy cube on there and then flip her around, make sure that we are set to wrench. Ooh. Last. You will see that it's inputting power very, very fast, but there is a limit. It didn't just automatically fill all the way to the top. 
based on rough calculations, it's inputting about 10 giga RF per second. I honestly don't know what you could make that would produce power that fast other than a creative cell. Even a reactor at full bore won't even come close to doing that. So while it is not, it is not perfectly uh, infinite in its transfer capacity, it's practically infinite. There's nothing that you can make yet that can produce power that fast. So that comes to the question, what's the best way to set up one of these things on a reactor? Well, the best way to set up a reactor, I'm sorry, I'm going by the lasers here. Oh, let me set myself to creative mode. The best way to set up a reactor, and if we look at this one, we are getting energy in, we're up in the gigas, so it's kind of slow, but if I go over here, we'll see that I've got seven cells and one provider inside. And if we come over here, we'll see that we are producing 200 KRF per tick. And if we go to the heat produced, we see that it's not building up in the machine. And the way I've got this set up is that I've just got one induction port coming right out of a reactor port. And that's been enough that even if I crank this thing all the way up to, let's say, 50 again, Where's my fuel? Let's go 50. I crank her all the way up to 50. And we start getting lots and lots of power going here. It still isn't building up in the machine. So we're getting full power transfer into our induction matrix as fast as it can be produced. So again, that's pretty much your optimal setup for a reactor. And then you can basically determine how you want to set up your outputs based on providers. So as you scale up and need to output more power, just add extra ports and then more providers on the inside. And that's pretty much the induction matrix in full. They're pretty simple machines, but they hold a lot of energy and they scale up amazingly. I can see these again becoming a massive, massive part of anybody's very mature base. As always, I want to thank you for watching. I've been Taco Mage and I hope you enjoyed the spotlight. See you next time.